Hi, I'm Edmund White. I'm a field product manager here at AvPoint. I'm here today with John Peluso, who's our VP of product management. Yep. So the topic of information lifecycle and lifecycle management is one that we uh, talk about a lot when we talk to customers about governance automation. And there's two uh, different sides of this. There's the lifecycle of your collaboration workspaces within SharePoint. And then there's the lifecycle of the content that gets collaborated on inside those workspaces. So when it comes to site lifecycle management, uh, the challenges that we're seeing are sprawl within SharePoint environment, um, old content, old sites uh, that no longer have a need or a business purpose still hanging around. Yep. And it's also, I mean, if you think about it, it's not just the end of life of those sites. The nature of the collaboration that's happening inside them can change over time. So we need a way to reflect both of those things. Uh, a way to identify sites that are no longer needed and then define the appropriate action, as well as a way to reflect the changing nature of the collaboration inside them. So in this short demo, what you're going to see is, first off, we're going to configure some triggers that will determine when sites go expired. And we'll base that on an elapsed period of time since they were created, or we'll base it on some type of inactivity monitor. Um, and be able to identify sites that are no longer being used. And then we'll show you how to set up um, automation around requests that come in during the life of a site for changes in ownership, changes in use, um, changes in metadata around that site. I've logged into SharePoint as my end user, Chris Turner. Thanks to the site information card, I see that uh, I am also a contact uh, in this site, which means that uh, I'm going to have certain tasks that are going to be assigned to me uh, during the life cycle of this site. We can also find out in the site information card that this particular projects site that I'm on was provisioned with a lease period um, that's ending in 62 days. Below this, in my to-do list, I see that I have a few tasks that have been assigned to me as a site contact uh, that I need to take care of. For example, this task uh, is very similar. Another site collection, which I am a secondary contact on, has expired. Another site collection called Information Technology, which I am also the secondary site collection contact on, uh, has expired. Its lease period has expired. So I'm getting a uh, task uh, asking me what I want to do about this. When this site was provisioned, my uh, IT department um, through governance policy elected to give me the options to extend, archive, delete, or even change the policy uh, of this site collection. It currently being a high business impact uh, type of site. So in this case I'm going to uh, want to extend my policy. So I'll come here and again uh, the governance on this is that I can elect how long I would like to extend this for rather than it being just a set number. So I'm going to say six months, click OK and it will go through an approval process to give me that extension on my lease. So in these two cases, in these two site collections, they were provisioned with lease periods. We can also set up triggers for inactivity. For example, if my project site has no visits, no hits uh, in six months, it can also trigger a task uh, asking me what I want to do uh, with this stale content.
since we're talking about the life cycle of these particular sites, another great advantage to governance automation is that we can now drive typical ticket service requests through a services catalog to reduce the administrative burden on our farm admins or IT staff. So for example, if I come over to my services catalog, I can see that I have the ability to change my project site classification. Now what is it currently? If I come over to metadata, I'll see that my site classification is currently internal, which means it's not set up to hold any sensitive content. In my case here, my project requirements have changed, so I need to change this classification in order to support sensitive content in this site. So I'm presented here with a really simple form where I'll type in a little information about what I'm trying to do. And then below, I can choose what value I want to change this to. What's great here is that this is hooked up to our Manage Metadata uh, taxonomy set. So I can come down here and start typing and get my Manage Metadata. Or, of course, I can open up the term set and select. From here, I click Save and Submit. This goes through an approval process to make this change, and it's automatically updated in the system. In the case of changing metadata, this is powerful because we have a lot of SLAs riding on the metadata of this site, including our classification engine, which is going to tag content, and our permissions policy uh, that's protecting this particular site they will automatically be changed just by changing the classification of the site. Many other changes such as these can be driven through the services catalog, such as change in ownership. If I need to uh, update maybe my primary contact uh, from Phil to Mary, I can do that through a services catalog. We can also change things like the policy of the site. Currently, this is a high business impact site. Maybe we need to decrease this, or maybe it started as a small project and is now moving up and needs higher SLAs and a higher policy. Through the use of automatic triggers that generate tasks and through a services catalog with requests, by provisioning sites with triggers for inactivity and elapsed time, we can control site sprawl and apply lifecycle governance policies automatically to our site collections. Additionally, during that life cycle of that site, we can drive typically burdensome tickets through a services catalog making changes to the site, self-service, and saving burden on our IT staff. Oh. <laughs>